Assalamu alaikum. Day 12, Juz 12. The Quran warns us from supporting others in their transgressions and violations to the commands of Allah. Through a story of someone who deserved a punishment from Allah, not because they sinned, but because they sided with the sinners. What is the ayah that mentions such story? إنه مصيبها ما أصابهم إن موعدهم الصبح أليس الصبح بقريب. This ayah came along a passage that discusses the actions of قوم لوط, the community of لوط who did many heinous crimes, but the biggest crime of theirs was that they indulged in same-sex acts and relationships. Allah سبحانه وتعالى clearly mentions this in the Quran. إِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِّن دُونِ النِّسَاءِ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ مُسْرِفُونَ Indeed, you approach men with lust instead of women. Rather, you are a people of transgression. Not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that they were the first community to introduce such shameful acts to all mankind, to humanity. وَلُوطًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةِ مَا سَبَقَكُمْ بِهَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ And when Lut told his community that do you commit such shameful acts by which no one in any other community have done before you. Subhanallah. But the discussion here is not necessarily about the people of Lut themselves but about his wife. His wife instead of following her husband, supporting his mission, believing in him, taking on his stance, subhanAllah, she sided with the sinners. She allied herself with them, endorsed what they do. Not only that, some narrations mention that she used to tell her community whenever Lut has male visitors coming from out of town so that they come and commit the sin with them, subhanAllah. How did that even happen? How did a wife of a prophet reached such situation. We don't know for sure, we don't know the details, but we see nowadays there are many events happening around us that are pressuring Muslim communities and any community of faith to endorse, to adopt such norms. And by doing so, some Muslims consciously or subconsciously may follow the footsteps of the wife of Lut, alayhi salam, subhanAllah. We see civil rights movements under the notions of blanket statements of supporting anyone and everyone. They are pressuring us to protect the rights of people to do whatever they wish. And they equate, you know, uh, you know, those who are subject to racism and discrimination with those who are discriminated just because they want to marry whoever they want, subhanAllah. We see laws passing that distort the moral views of a community. Criminalize speaking out against transgressions, against same-sex marriage. And this actually, it's not protecting our, uh, the believers' freedoms of speech, which is supposed, supposed to be a fundamental right. This reminds us about the ayah where Qawm Lut said to, the, to each other, أَخْرِجُوا آلَ لُوطٍ مِنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يتطهرون. Expel Lut and his family out of your community, out of the city, because they are people who want to remain chaste. Subhanallah. If somebody is trying to hold on to their principles, they are being attacked. Now, we have to be clear. We stand against the acts, the sins of committing same-sex behavior, publicizing it and spreading it among the communities. But we acknowledge that some people may have same-sex attractions due to many reasons. They may act upon it or choose to abstain from doing it. They may do that in secret versus in public. Now, what we as community, as believers, who have to, to, to enforce that we're not judging people who have the attractions, but we stand, we resist the notion of publicizing, normalizing, and forcing us to accept it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحِبُّونَ أَن تَشِيعَ الْفَاحِشَةُ فِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who love acts of shamelessness to be spread, to be publicized among the communities. لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ To be spread across the believers, they will get a severe punishment in the worldly life and in the hereafter. The discussion here is not to say that we are all perfect or we don't sin. SubhanAllah, human beings are prone, كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمَ خطاء. We always sin, SubhanAllah. So a Muslim may fall into the sin of drinking alcohol. 
A Muslim may fall into the sin of watching pornography or engaging in adultery and fornication or subhanAllah even cheating on their spouse. This can happen. We are human beings. But can you imagine a Muslim forming a group called alcoholic Muslims where they want to protect their rights to drink alcohol in public, let alone do it in front of the Muslim community and normalize it. You cannot have a Muslim saying that I identify with watching porn or I want to form a club for Muslim husbands who cheat on their wives. This is normalizing. This is identifying with the sin. This is something in clear violations, not only to the faraid of Allah, but to the aqidah of Islam. Because as a Muslim, you should at least hate that sin that you are doing, even if you are basically doing it because you are weak. When it comes to homosexual acts, a whole city, the city of Sadum, was destroyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala collapsed the whole city because of that act. Because they refused to acknowledge it was wrong. And that's why as Muslims, we should fight. We should at least enforce the idea that the commands of Allah should be respected. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable all of us to speak truth to power, to try to change the munkar with our tongues, with our hands, and with our hearts. Assalamu alaikum.